That's real nice of you. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh. You see, I told you it would help if we put that sign out front, Fawn Hall in person. <laughs> You've gone too far. <laughs> Wow, jeez. That looks like a Rorschach. That's what it is. Woo! Let me my old Rorschach test. What is that? It's it's my old Rorschach test. God almighty. You're gonna do that joke too, huh? Cowboy, cowboy and madness. <laughs> All right tonight. You're in a good mood. We got a good show for you. This is a friendlier crowd than I think Reagan got to his press conference oh. tonight. <laughs> I don't, you look, I don't need this job, you know. I own a car wash in Capistrano. <laughs> you know, one thing I don't understand, the president cannot remember one of the most important dates of his administration, but a bunch of birds can remember. <laughs> Gonna remember that on March 19th, they gotta go to the coast for a meeting. <laughs> now they make the trip from South America, I think in something like, well, it's pretty easy for them. But it took them about six hours to get a cab at LAX, and then they go on to Camp <laughs> Speaking of little flying creatures, and I am, here we go again in Southern California. You know what we have an infestation of now? We've had gypsy moths. <laughs> That's not funny. They're devastating. They're very destructive insects, and uh, they're in Encino, which figure they're attracted by the lighting fixture stores on Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> the uh... <laughs> the lady likes gypsy moth. I guess the sound of it. Gypsy moth is a uh, a little different than other insects. It's pretty easy to recognize. It wears one tiny earring, and, <laughs> and when it spots a sp uh, spray plane. Uh, it warns others by banging on a little tambourine. <laughs> See, gypsy moths. <laughs> the president is speaking because I'm speaking. Actually, you know, we're, we record just a little before the show is seen. So I haven't seen all of it yet, but uh, apparently CBS, because of their cutbacks, don't have a lot of correspondence there. I'm not sure Sam Donaldson showed up tonight, so CBS sent over Andy Rooney, <laughs> who asked the president the hard-hitting question, why is it when you go to the laundromat, one sock always sticks in the dryer? Why is that? <laughs> you like impressions, huh? Yeah, you. you dirty rat. No. <laughs> the Senate today approved that other $40 million, very close vote, that aid to the Congress, but to make sure, is supposed to go this time where it's going. They're going to send it with Barbara Walters. <laughs> well, television has uh, reached another milestone. They are now running condom ads on ABC television. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although I saw one last night, I, I didn't believe. A guy came in and says, we've secretly replaced the fine condom sold in this drugstore. <laughs> With cheap Japanese imports. Let's, w let's watch the fun. <laughs> are you ready for the weird news item of the day? Yeah. yeah. Strange, strange things are going on in the world. A sausage company was fined. And you know what for? For using kangaroo meat <laughs> in its sausages. Kangaroo, I think it must be true. I had a hot dog for lunch. <laughs> and all day long, I've had this weird desire to carry my son around in my pants. It'd be weird going to a ballpark and the Frank hops over by itself. You know? <laughs> anyway, I, I, sh I should be honest with you. It's not in this country. It's in, in West Germany. And they find and send him to jail. Well, what would be wrong with kangaroo meat? I mean, 
Right. Anyway, give us a law. <laughs> anyway, we got a good show tonight. Later on, uh, we got a very funny man, funny actor, Sherman Hemsley. Yeah. He's with us tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Joe... Joe Garagiola will be out here. Joe's gonna come out and tell us he's using that new drug that just came out called uh, minoxidil or something like that. <laughs> Trying to get rid of the agony of baldness and experience the ecstasy of a haircut. <laughs> and a gentleman I have not yet met. He is from, I believe, South Carolina. His name is uh, Dalton Stevens, and he is... Uh, button king. He's kind of the button king. Yeah! <laughs> See, I, I knew it. So thanks for coming. We'll be real <laughs> We've got Sherman Hensley with us tonight, Joe Garagiola, Dalton Stevens, whom we'll meet in a moment. One, one little personal thing here that I'd kind of like to take care of from my old hometown. You know, I grew up in Norfolk, Nebraska. Yes. And when I was in junior high school, I think it was, a long time ago, our, the Norfolk High School got in the finals of the state basketball championship. Mm -hmm. First time they'd ever been involved in the finals, and they lost. Ah. And I was crushed. And I said, well, before I get out of high school, they'll win it. They didn't. No. They've been holding the championship for 77 years. And a fellow by the name of Mike Fuhrer, who's the assistant sport writer of the Norfolk Daily News, sent me a copy of our old hometown paper. And good old Norfolk Panthers, after 77 years, won the Nebraska Class A state basketball tournament. Terrific. Mike, congratulations. Congratulations, Norfolk. You know that? That's great. I tell you, that's a great shot there, too. You know that? Mm -hmm. A young man by the name of Chris Price, and you know how, you know how they won it? There were like six seconds to go. And he made a three-pointer oh. from about 21 feet and won it by one point. So that's a nice match. That's right. So I guess I've waited long enough. 77, <laughs> 77 years you wait. To prove what your point is, they'd point. win. All right, what else we got here? Oh, Eddie Shaughnessy. So he's seated behind the drums. He is going to appear with his group. Are you going to appear with a group, uh, Eddie, or...? Uh, I'll appear with their bands, John. Okay, he's going to be at the um, Perry Meriden Jazz Festival in Indianapolis on Saturday and Sunday at the Pittsburgh Jazz Bennett for, for Youth at Risk at uh, Carnegie Music Hall. Thank you. So drop in and say hello to you. Sure. Hey. Oh. <laughs> One bride and shine. <laughs> Still have our all-over North hat back here, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, they want to see it. Do it one more time. Ollie, Ollie does like that station wagon, doesn't he? <laughs> How many of you ladies read the uh, Ladies' Home Journal? Yeah. Okay. Then maybe some of you are here tonight who have participated in a survey that they ran. Now, last September, what they did, they published a questionnaire for their readers to find out, I guess, generally how women feel about themselves, their work marriages and the world in general. And it was confidential, you know. Women were able to tell their personal, intimate details. A lot of them did. Mm. But they wouldn't even tell Bob Eubanks, I guess. They told the ladies on the ground. 100,000 women responded to the survey. Would you like to hear some of their sample yes, findings? Yes, very much so. <laughs> you wouldn't have brought that magazine down here for nothing, so <laughs> something on your mind. You got it. 56% say there's something in their past they've never told their husbands. And if you think we've told our wives everything, they know. <laughs> You're slightly mistaken. Why am I talking that way? 50% said the worst thing they've, uh, they'd never done was lie about something important. But 25% that said the worst thing they've ever done was have an affair. 40-40% of the women, according to Ladies Home Journal, lie about their weight. 30.8% cheat on their taxes. 
Only, uh, yeah. 57% steal pens, paper, and other supplies from their office where they work. Right. <laughs> and if they knew that a friend's husband was cheating on her, only 30% would consider telling them. Yeah, that, that's not... Yeah, that's... 86% have a good relation or excellent relationship with their boss, but only 67% say their husbands are easy to live with. <laughs> That's 3% lower than the number who say they get along fine with their mothers-in-law. Interesting thing. 59% have a gripe about their husbands. Do you know what the most important gripe is that women say about their husbands? He doesn't share his feelings. 10% say he doesn't earn enough money. <laughs> And they're all here. <laughs> and 5% said he isn't good in bed. <laughs> Look at the men booing. Look at the guys are booing. Now, we were fascinated by this survey. We really were. And we said to ourselves, selves, uh, <laughs> you probably wouldn't find a better cross-section of women in America than we have right here tonight. Right. Probably half of our audience women. We have a little survey we have rented at considerable expense. You didn't buy this yet? No, we rent this applause meter. We, there it is right there. Probably, uh, we went up for almost about five bucks for this. <laughs> and we're going to ask you some questions. Um, this will be confidential. We will not turn the camera on you. This... Is this the women only now, right? Well, there might be some for men. We'll All see right. if they relate to women. Sure. How many married women are still excited by your husband? <laughs> How many get more turned on steaming the label off a bottle of Paul Newman's Industrial Strength Spaghetti Sauce? <laughs> okay. How many women have actually given thought to who you might like to marry if your husband died accidentally? <laughs> How many of you are currently working on the alibi? <laughs> How many women feel you're the right weight? Okay, that's right. How many would like to drop a few pounds? How many feel the only person between you and the Queen Mary is Oprah Winfrey? <laughs> Ooh. Oh. How many of you, now be, be honest, as I say we will not, yet it's dark out there, nobody will say. How many of you have had more than one lover? Come on, all right. This is a little, little delicate. How many of you have had more than five? <laughs> Eight rows up. <laughs> How many thought the movie Platoon was the story of your first blind date? <laughs> Let's see. How many women would consider having cosmetic or plastic surgery? Again, how many have already had a little cosmetic surgery? <laughs> how many have you, how many of you have had so much plastic you could legally be declared a Mattel toy? <laughs> How many have occasionally taken office supplies from work? Now, come on. How many have ripped off enough stationery to send your kids through graduate school? <laughs> Let's see. How many like your boss? How many are not too crazy about him? <laughs> How many would like to hold his face against the Xerox machine? And make copies till he goes blind. <laughs> okay, one final question. How many feel your husband's a good lover? How many of you women feel he should have his last name legally changed to Bam? <laughs> Our own 
survey. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's very sweet of you to join in that. Put the applause meter uh, in the cardboard box, Bobby, and we'll keep it around for a while. Uh, Sherman Hemsley will be out in a moment. Your girls, your Dalton Stevens, you're going to meet first tonight. So stay where you are. First guest is from uh, Bishopville, South Carolina, and he has a very usual hobby or maybe obsession, you might call it. Buttons. He puts them on everything, and we thought you'd like to meet him. Would you welcome from Bishopville, Dalton Stevens. Dalton, how are you? It's nice to meet you. Fine, fine. Glad to meet you too, Mr. John. Yeah. Now, somebody told me... <laughs> I, I have not seen Dalton until this very moment. Somebody said, would you like to see Dalton before the show? And I says, no, I think I want to see the suit the first time on the air. Now, that's, that's a remarkable suit. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, sir. How many buttons are on there? I got 16,333 on my cap, shirt, and pants, and I got 517 on my shoes. <laughs> I didn't see the shoes. Oh, you better get a shot of the shoes. I didn't see that. Now, did you did you sew all of those on yourself? Uh, yes, sir. I sewed all of them on there one at a time. Yeah. Well, that's got to be a little heavy. A little heavy. I got 11 pounds of buttons on my shirt, five pounds and one ounce on my on my pants, and uh, and on my shoes. I don't know how many. Yeah. I didn't weigh those. <laughs> well, now, except the amount. And I've got to ask the obvious question: uh, Why do you do this? I mean. <laughs> Insomnia because I don't sleep at night, and so I, I sit up and sew all night. You, you have trouble sleeping? I, I, yes, yeah, so some nights I don't, I don't ever go to bed. Yeah. So instead of sitting up looking at the four walls, I just get my needle and thread and go to sewing away. That makes sense. Yeah. But. How do you do, in other words, instead of counting sheep or something like that, you instead figured... Instead of counting sheep, yes, I started sewing butts. I counted all the sheep there was in the United States and Australia, and then I'd run out of sheep, so I started sewing on butts. Well, <laughs> now, what gave you the idea of the buttons? Did, did, did you just get well, up one night and were fooling around? And... Uh, no, sir, I was coming home from a... a, a I played with a, a quartet, a gospel quartet, and I was coming home one night sitting in the back seat by myself and something came, you know, uh, I'm not a religious fanatic, uh -huh. but uh, something come to my mind and told me, said, why don't you go home and sew buttons? You, you, you don't sleep anyway. <laughs> so, 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 and it just kind of came out of the... It just, it just came out of the blue sky, so I went home and started sewing buttons, and, and uh, so it turned out that I got a lot of buttons, and that happened to be the first one I put on, but I don't remember the last yeah. one because I was probably asleep when that one was put on. <laughs> The voice didn't say anything like, if you don't sew these buttons on, you're going to be called home at the end of March or anything? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. No, I, I didn't have any of these. Okay. All right. So no, you... I, I'm, I'm not a fanatic over there. No, yeah. It's just... Well, it's very attractive. That's unusual. Uh, yes. Where do you I... get most of these? Uh, I got a button company that furnishes me in buttons. Oh, I see. Well, that, that would help. Did you ever collect anything besides buttons? Uh... Nothing but glue. I've collected glue and buttons. And, and, uh, 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 uh. Before the buttons, birds. You sewed birds on your? Uh, no. I raised birds. Oh, I see. What kind of birds? Uh, parakeets. Uh -huh. what, how, how many parakeets did you have? Uh, well, well the, I had a, a thousand that were mating, and and I don't know how many they had, four and five to the box. God, I don't know how many. It must have been... A, a thousand birds that were mating must have been... Uh, it didn't take long that I couldn't feed them all hardly. It was so many of them. They can get ahead of you, they can't they? They got ahead of me, yes, yeah. they sure did. So but you... I, I would take my guitar, and, and at night, a lot of nights I would take my guitar, and I'd go out and I'd just strum to them, and it looked like it... it, 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 it say the nerves were bad, you know, and it was all... If I, because I kept lights on them at night so they could see how to go in and feed the babies oh, and, 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 and eat. So it, it, made, them, it made them content, mm -hmm. uh, like a, 
They were continuing by yeah. me playing music. But they got out of hand, and you just got too many of them, huh? Uh, yes, they got, I got so many until uh, they, the, got, they got they got they got so many I couldn't feed them. So, so I, you just so, sold them off. I huh? started I started selling them. Yes. Now, when you mentioned guitar, I saw you, and I know that's your guitar because it's covered with buttons. Uh, yes. It is. <laughs> could you give us Could you give us a sample of what you? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You just kind of glue those on? Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. on, on this, and I got them on my strap. Okay. Got them on my strap. I got those sewed on, but on this year, and you like this year, now. If you like the color of my clothes, would you give me buttons instead of a rose? <laughs> buttons can be square around. They keep my pants from falling. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Can you stay with us a few more minutes? Uh, yes, I'll stay with you. Okay. You want to want to take a break and then come back? Well, stay if stay a few minutes here and uh, we'll talk a little more. Okay. Uh, all right, I'd be glad. We to. just have to do a commercial here. Uh, all right. And we'll be right back. Stay with you. If you just tuned in, this is not President Reagan's press conference. This is uh, Mr. Dalton Stevens uh, from Bishopville, South Carolina, right? Yes, and Mr. John, if, if I get nervous, in which I'm already nervous, no. uh, if you have to ask me something twice for you to understand it, don't, don't, don't oh, you hesitate because sometimes I'm hard to understand. Oh, I understand. I'm nervous especially. Oh, I, I spent a little time down south. I understand I that. Know, all right, sir. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad of that. Understand you perfectly. All right, sir. Yeah. Well, I'm sure proud of that then. How does your, <laughs> how does your wife, her name is Ruby? My name, my wife's name, name is Ruby, yes. How does she feel about this hobby of yours? Uh, she thought it was wonderful uh, about me putting on this suit, but when I started putting them on my car, <laughs> I'm going to show a picture of that. M Mr. Johnny, I yeah. never, th this is the only time she got upset. She said, I'll go along, I'll go along with the buttons on your car, and I'll go along with buttons on your guitar, but I'd just be damned if you're going to put them on my automobile. You... I said, well, honey, if you'll just wait a little bit, I said, tomorrow afternoon, I'll promise to have you another car. And I started putting Boy, buttons that's... on my car, and then I, I, I got buttons on it where you could take any piece off of it and not upset anything else. And I got everything is in buttons, even the flag on top and button king well, is in buttons. That's remarkable. What's next now? You've done the suit, your shoes, the guitar, the car? Well, I wanted to, uh, wanted to do my living room. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I see trouble there okay, with your wife. Okay, yes, sir. Now, that, that's a no-no, and she yeah. done laid a foot down on that. That's not that. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put buttons and uh, on my casket, and I'm going to have button king wrote on, on my casket because oh, that's, I'm a, that's my arrangement before uh, uh, you go. because that's the only friend I'm going to have whenever I leave, you know. Well, well, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, that's, that's so, kind of nice. I mean, that's, that's, that's my way of doing things. Yeah. You've been married now to uh, Mr. Stevens for 30, 32 years, I hear? Uh, yes. Yeah. What, what's the secret of a happy? You must uh, be. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you, Mr. John, if anything ever happened between me and my old lady, uh -huh. And I can, and I can find one of your ex old ladies that's got plenty of money getting out. Of the house. <laughs> 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 Now, now you tell me, huh? Sure. We're going to live in California in the summertime, and I'm going to live down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, when the, in, 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 in this wintertime out here in summertime in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, well, <laughs> there, there are a few of them strolling around out there. With all the other... Anyway, that's enough. Do you think the people in Bishopville are watching the show tonight? Uh, Mr. Johnny, 
They people that go to bed with the chickens down there. Yeah. Now, when I say go to bed with the chickens, when the chickens go, go to roost, yeah. they are in bed. Oh. But tonight, yeah. those people are sitting up watching me and you and your show. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Good for you. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. Say hello to all of your friends in Bishopville for us. This is your first trip to California? Yes, sir, and I have enjoyed it. You like it, I huh? tell you what, Mr. Johnny. Yeah. I talked <laughs> I, I, I talk with people at, 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 at the uh, hotel. Uh huh. And, and uh, a lot of them don't speak real good English. But, <laughs> but let, let me tell you. Let me tell you the good secret about it. Uh huh. I can correspond with those people, and they love me, and I love them. Well, good for you. Well, I think wherever you went, I, I think, think wherever you went, dog, you'd, get, you'd get along with people just yes, fine. Yes, sir, I sure did. Well, it was a I've pleasure been... having you out here, and we hope you have a nice, safe trip home, and uh, we'll keep in touch with you. You do that, yes, okay. sir. Okay, thank right. you, dog. He got you. He wants to go out and get one of the X's. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whoopee! Yes, yes, sir, Mr. Johnny. You betcha. Uh, nice man. Yes, right. he was. Bishopville, yeah. South Carolina. All right, well, they <laughs> Sherman Hemsley is with us tonight. Joe Garagiola, and we'll be back in a moment. He's a very funny actor. He's the star right now of uh, that NBC series, Amen, which is on Saturday nights at 9.30. He's also starring in a movie called Ghost Fever, which is going to come out the 27th of this month. Would you welcome, please, Sherman Hemsley. You gotta teach me those moves sometime. Sounds good. Hey, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. And uh, you're happy, and I'm happy that yeah. uh, Amen has been picked up for another season. Yep. It's great. Yeah. Good for you. I should mention it's produced through through my company. Yeah. So I have a vested interest in that also. <laughs> I mean, but it's a good show, and the cast is good. Yeah. But you did the uh, the Jeffersons for what? 11, 10, 11 years. Eleven years. Yeah. Well, that was a great. Show. Yeah. Yeah. And even before that, you were a regular on All in the Family, which came out of, uh, the Jeffersons came out of that show, yeah, right? right. Mm -hmm. So you've been in television since the early 70s. But it, you know, it went by so quick, it doesn't seem yeah. like that long. I just take one script, learn it, throw it in the trash, learn another one, throw it in the trash. <laughs> Are you a quick study? Yeah, pretty quick. Yeah, I've seen you when I come down and watch the well, cast. Well, with Ed Weinberger, you have to be quick. I'm yeah, <laughs> Ed will. <laughs> he'll, get, he'll get on you quickly. Yeah, he's great. When you, um, when you first became known, because uh, I, I don't know you well, but I know that you're rather shy when you're not when you're not working. Yeah. I mean, you don't go out a great deal, right? Right. right. And does it bother you to be recognized when you're out? Well, it's just weird because you know, like coming from we're not ever being noticed, and like it's just and all of a sudden everybody saying, hey, "Hey, I know you, I know you," you know. And I'd I'd like to get to know everybody, but uh, yeah. A lot of people in the world, you know? Yeah, and they yell out, you know, yeah. still from the yeah. Jeffersons, I guess, hey, George. George. Right? And now Deacon Fry. I say, well, my name is Sherman. Uh, I know you as George. <laughs> you know what we had to do? Cool we though. had, remember, you, we had the first one, the, the first episode that was played this season. They had a party, right? Yeah. Everybody is there, and they're looking around. Somebody says, <laughs> where's Sherman? I said, I don't know, isn't he here? And I had to, we had to get on the phone <laughs> and call him at home. You didn't even show up for that party. I mean, you came over, yeah. but it, you really felt uncomfortable there. When's the last time you went out to? That was the last time. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to go get you. No, I understand that most people think that everybody who gets in front of an audience for some reason is an extrovert. But many performers, when they're finished with what they're doing, are really rather... Well, you know, it when I was a kid, I guess, uh, I started acting in elementary school, you know. And like, um, when I got on the stage in front of the kids, then that when they were like responsive to what mm -hmm. I was doing. As opposed to when, uh, as my normal self was like, eh, come on, you know. 
It was a whole different feeling. You know, In other words, it's a way to get attention yeah. and kind of be removed on a one-to-one -one basis, but then all of a sudden you're now on a one-to-one -one basis and it's, it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's a common thing that happens to performers. But I get nervous every time I come on stage and like to do a play. I, I did the, the play in... Um, Every, every time you come up for an episode, it's like the same thing. You get this, the jitters and jitters, jitters, jitters. Yeah. I did a show like in Vegas for eight months, and every night, I, was, I knew what I was going to do every night, but still. Panic. So tonight, yeah. I'm not scared, you know. <laughs> but then, huh. but yeah, then but it's just adrenaline. It just makes you work hard, you know? Yeah. You move, you must have, uh, were you athletic? Because you move well. I mean, you move funny. You, you do, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you do instinctive yeah, like, things yeah. with, your, uh, with your body uh, that uh, sometimes I don't know if you know you should do. I used, to, do, it, just... I used to play a lot of ping pong. I used to play yeah. like a lot of baseball and stuff like that, but no, I'm not really athletic. You just used to dance a lot. Yeah, a lot. I can tell that. I come from school, throw the books down, learn the new steps. <laughs> That's all I did. That's why I got kicked out again. You said, you, were you bumped out of school? Yeah. Yeah. I went to Bach, you know how right. You went to, in Boston, you said? No, Bach, South Philadelphia. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> you also, you said you were acting or doing stuff when you were in elementary school, or? Yeah, it's young? like all through school, elementary school. That's where it started, like I started acting in elementary school. When I got into junior high school, it wasn't too accepted. And my boy said, hey, we want to be an actor, man. You man, come on. You should play baseball and do those. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I just forgot about it, you know, until I got out of service and I had nothing else to do. I didn't want to get a regular job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. tried to find a way around it, you know. First, I tried to be a musician, tried to learn how to play the bass, but then I didn't want to practice and carrying a big bass around on my shoulder, you know. So it just all came together. And I just said, well, I'll just go back to what I originally felt comfortable doing. Tell me, but you worked, somebody told me, for the post office for a while? Yeah, six years, the post office. Well, did you deliver mail or were you working? No, I worked inside, delivering, you know, like a case in the mail and stuff like that. I did some delivery work. But it was a clean job and had you got respect in the, in, at home. My mother was proud. Hey, he's working for the government, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and things like that, you know. But I was always, uh, like, and when I worked at the post office, I used to come in uh, the post office at midnight. Before that, I'd do a show, uh, you know, in the community theater. Yeah. I'd go to work and I'd go in the morning. I'd um, catch a uh, train up to New York to study. It was like a whole thing. And good. And then the all I worked, but paid off. Yes, it has. And I love it, you know, I love what I'm doing. It's yeah. just fun. Tell me about the uh, the movie now, Ghost Ghost Fever, is it? Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, like a, one of those haunted house types, sort of like a modern time uh, Abbott Costello type thing. Yeah. Uh, two cops. Not serious, straight. No, yeah. fun, it's like family thing. And that's the kind of stuff I like, because this is the movies I like. I think I'm... from the film clip you're going to see, you'll see that this is not a, what you call a real serious... No, no way. ...type of, <laughs> type of motion picture. So we, we've got a little excerpt here. Watch the monitor, and here's a little excerpt from Ghost Fever. <laughs> going to have a seance at midnight. At that time, I shall exert all my powers to bring about a termination to the sentence being served by that bad boy boy guard. <laughs> Since you cannot leave, you might as well join us, huh? We will be having dinner shortly. Well, I'm not going to be here for dinner or seances or anything else. I'm leaving this nut house right now. <laughs> Look, you can stay here if you want to, but nobody's keeping me here against my will. Nice to see you really getting the heavy Shakespearean type of stuff, Jerem. <laughs> anyway, your, your talent is fun to watch your work. Thank you. And I hope the show goes on for a long time. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Next guest, as you know, does NBC's baseball game of the week. He's currently hosting a new version of the game show Strike It Rich. Would you welcome Mr. Joe Garagiola? Okay, tell him what you just said to me. I did a joke in the monologue about what is that, Minoxidil? Minoxidil. <laughs> yeah. You know when you said that, what I said? What? I said if John takes a good look at this head, Vigoro wouldn't help him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a head, man. Well, they said, you know, they they've warned that don't expect miracles. I guess in some cases, it, it will will help it grow a little bit. I certainly. But you shouldn't change. Your whole image would change. My whole image. Even if you could grow hair, don't grow hair. Don't grow? No. Okay, I'm not growing it, folks. In case you're worried. 
Bald is beautiful or something is like that. Is it really? <laughs> well, not <laughs> You're, we're, you're here a little early this year. Baseball season hasn't even started yet. Well, you got spring training. You have to get yeah. these guys ready. I mean, they have to get ready for the big season coming up. And now, when, when you played, yes. how long before the regular season did you go to spring training? We went at least six weeks. Yeah. Has and it changed at all? Oh, it's changed. But first of all, I brought something you asked me to bring last time. My I know first what you're contract. About. You know, Remember? I couldn't find mine today. We, entertainers, people in the show business, love to talk about when they didn't make any money because they feel guilty making good money now. <laughs> and they always come out in front of the public saying, gee, I remember when I worked for a dollar a month. <laughs> and the other guy says, oh, you think that's bad? I worked for 50 cents a month and had nothing. Right? So we were talking about our early contract. I don't feel that way. Really? Let me see. I'll tell you why I know before I show you this. Yeah. Now, I was in the big leagues. This is the big leagues, okay? Year. I mean, we're supposed to be the top. Yeah. 16 teams, 25 guys big on the team. Major league. Big leagues, bubblegum cards, shaving commercials, everything, right? Give, give me that contract. Look what I got. National League of Professional Baseball Clubs, uniform players contract. Right, look wow. at the money. Well, I'm going to St. Louis National Bank Club, here and here call the club. Right. And Joseph. Joseph, Joseph yes, Giola, that's my... Of so-and-so and so-and-so. Salary for the service, for it tells what you have to do. Yeah. All this. For the service aforesaid, the club will pay the player an aggregate salary of six hundred dollars per month. Six hundred a month, a month. That's nineteen forty-six. Tim Raines just turned down a million two. Six. You're steamed about this, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> steamed. It's really. You, me... you, you're steamed about this whole thing. Did you yeah. Think making a... uh, because where did he get all the money? I didn't get. Somebody was making it. Six hundred a month. Six hundred a month, and and that's in the big leagues. When I signed my first contract in the minor leagues, I got sixty-five dollars a month. That's Two dollars a day, man. <laughs> you are really angry. Well, I've I never am. seen you this way. Well, and then it says that they will pay you only the time you play, six months. <laughs> Big deal, you know. So you only got six months of this? Six months, that's all we got. In fact, we won the World Series that year. Let me tell you something. What was your bonus when you won the World Series? We took home $2,900, all right, for winning. But here's the payoff. Ted Williams, we beat the Red Sox. Right. Ted Williams got the loser's share. If I'm lying, I'm dying, man. He gave it to the clubhouse boy. He said, here, we're even. His World Series, Jack. <laughs> You think I was steam? You should Boy. hear him. Yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> but it, it's, it's like that in all sports. Tennis players now go out and play an exhibition and make $100,000 in one night. Professional golfers, you just were playing too early. What do you think they would pay you today? With your skills today. If you had, <laughs> no, with your skills then. With my skills then. What would you think you could command? Well, I played 112 <clears throat> games one year, regardless of what I did. That would what? be worth uh, a bonus of at least 25000 because I know a guy gets on a scale every other month and gets $10,000 for meeting a weight clause. Really? Yeah. He doesn't do anything but just get on a scale, and I don't think he can read it. He's got to have somebody read it for him. <laughs> he makes it. You're getting it all is... of this... It has changed, John. Everything has you're changed. You're getting all of this out tonight, aren't you, Joe? Well, oh. everything has no, changed. Right. You yeah. go to the ballpark now, yeah. okay? It used to be when I played... I'd hot hear... dogs were what? I mean, there's a good analogy. Yeah. Well, Pay what, 10 cents for a hot dog or 15 cents? Yeah, now what are they? A dollar and a quarter, a dollar oh, and a half? They're more than that, aren't they? A couple of bucks. Well, if you watch a ball player, I mean, uh, a guy used to be able to throw the ball. If a guy threw the ball hard, what'd you say? He threw it hard, right? Mm -hmm. No longer. Today, he has great velocity. <laughs> They say he's got good control. They say, no, he, he has good location. Good location. In fact, I'll tell you what. Sherman touched on something I was listening back there when he said he gets the jitters, right? Right. Okay. In baseball, they used to call that choking up. Right. Right? Now, I saw a scouting report that says, reacts unfavorably to stress situations. <laughs> he chokes. Let me tell you something. It's fear, right? But the good guy's control. He's a great actor, right. and he controls it. You know what real fear is? What? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Max Baird, a great fighter. Remember that name? Well, Max Baird, heavyweight? Of course. Right. He said real fear was to be in a ring with Joe Lewis. Great champion, right? right? He said to be in a ring with Joe Lewis, you're here, Joe Lewis is over there, you look at him and realize he wants to go home early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Joe, my pleasure. We'll, uh, 
We were waiting for the season uh, to start, and we'll be hearing you then. April 11th, okay. we'll be there, Dodgers Sherm, and Giants. Sherm, you're headed for Canada. You're going to work on a play for a yeah. while? Uh, I'm not Rappaport. Uh -huh. uh, Calgary. Yeah, good play. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay, tomorrow night we have Willie Nelson, uh, Jimmy Brogan, and uh, Joseph Bologna will be with us. Have a nice night. Good night. <laughs> I'm humbled by that applause.